behind him. Rhino, of course, in the points battle. He is in the points race. He still has a chance. But, man, he is another one of those guys who's going to need a miracle to happen that Doug Henry needs to break. We talked about in the opening that the one thing that would really hurt these guys is if Doug Henry got off to a great start. He's done that. The other championship contenders have to beat him here if they're going to stay alive. Well, we've mentioned just how tough this track is. It's the closest one, I guess, in comparison to Unadilla, but not quite as rough as that racetrack. Speaking of Unadilla, James Dobb on the green Kawasaki, number 30 there. It looks like he had the whole shot. He finished second. That's his best finish of the year at Unadilla. So you'd think this track should work well for him. Well, he's running really well right now. He's back in the fourth following Davey Yezik. And Yezik, we haven't seen a lot of him uh, this year. I guess uh, we have occasionally seen him on, but he hasn't exactly been burning things up, but he's looking to have a good run today. This is a great start for Yezik. He finished 10th. That's his best finish so far this year. So right now he's way ahead of that. And that was at the second moto at Millville. He rides for Honda of Troy. And right now at this time of the season, it's important to have strong rides because you don't know where these riders might end up and with which team. Well, James Dobbs, and he will be teammates next year, I guess, right? Dobbs moving on over to Honda of Troy? That's true. So I wonder if Yezik, I don't, I don't know, I haven't heard about Yezik's plans for next year. But uh, Yezik right now uh, leading James Dobbs. He goes up the inside as they go up the hill past the spectators. Dobbs takes the outside line. He cuts the advantage down just a little bit. They'll come down the hill. James Dobbs looking to take over the third spot. But right now Yezik is doing an excellent job of holding on to it. But we are still in the early stages. A long way to go. There they go into that turn. The left-hander. Dobbs over the whoops. Cuts it down just a little bit more. But Yezik scoots off the corner as he gets a good bite. You know, Yezik is not confirmed necessarily with Honda of Troy because James Dobb and Mike Brown are going to be there so this might be a great opportunity for him to showcase his talents to try and hang on to that ride. Well of course Dobb moving on to Honda of Troy next year but he's among the three riders riding for the Splitfire Hot Wheels Pro Circuit team along with Ryan Hughes who still has a shot at the championship and also Gonzalez among the teammates. Now this is not really a factory team. They do a lot of aftermarket things for the bike so they're as near a factory operation as you can get and Jerry Bernardo caught up with the team and has this report. Okay, here's the scoop as I see it. Low Desert News Flash. Me, the boys, my friends, the guys I work with. All right, team, Hot Wheels, Swift Fire, Kawasaki, Pro Circuit, Terrace Raceway. Today, Jerry Squid Rider for a day. This is what we're gonna do. We're gonna ride. Motocross, I don't. They'll teach me how. We're gonna go to Monterey, Mexico for fish tacos. And we're going to England, baby. Yep, Dobby, and we're gonna go to the Pulps. And the Pulps. Because, what else? Girls. What? Girl! Jerry, you said you needed some help, bud, but damn. <laughs> you ain't looking so good. Ah, uh, let's go to the woods. Okay, well, uh, looks like you're coming in here. You gotta come in here and setting up, you know? You wanna lay back, uh, stand up a little bit until you get your front end gets to the corner. When you get to the corner, you move yourself up on the gas tank. And then put your leg out and look ahead. Yeah. Always look ahead because your bike goes where your eyes go. So don't get in the soft stuff because you don't have too much control there. So try staying a little bit on the harder part and maybe come out here a little bit wider. Roll the throttle yeah, and on. Make, yeah, and make it more of a squeeze instead of a yeah. knife. You know, you I think I'm like going, uh, uh, Yeah, it so looks you like you're a little roll. far back too. Yeah. And you kind of come Stay out up. and you don't have too much control back there. <laughs> Hi, I'm Jamie Dub from Derby, England, riding for Split by Hot Wheels, Pro Circuit Kawasaki's factory team. And did you know, this boy here, you may think he's a cool TV producer and all this, but really, he's a beautitianist down the local road in Corona. Hi, I'm Pedro Gonzalez. I'm from Monterrey, Mexico, and my job is to race motocross, and I ride for 
came with five hot wheels brought to Kawasaki. And I think I come here to America to watch Beavis and Butthead and do some funny stuff. My name is Ryan Hughes from Escondido, California. I live for uh, riding motorcycles, girls, and probably naked rock climbing. Oh, man. <laughs> that guy's got a problem. Uh, Mitch Payton from Pro Circuit, live in Norco, California. Um, founded the Pro Circuit team that we're using Split Fire Pro Circuit Kawasaki's. And uh, uh, what can I say? I get to smell plugs, and chicks dig me. They really do. They got to have me. Ladies and gentlemen, how about a round of applause for the winner, Rhino Ryan Hughes! What a great story, Jerry. Thank you very much. Should mention Ricky Pendleton was the photographer, Scott McLemore the producer. They did a great job in helping Jerry put that piece together. That was a fantastic piece, and look at this. It looks like Dobb is on the outside. Has he made it? Yes. He has now moved up a position and showed that all that practicing those guys were doing. I'm not sure if they were <laughs> practicing or if they are trying to train Jerry, but obviously whatever they were doing paid off here for Dobb. Dobb's in third place. Let's check in with his picks. Jamie's putting in a really good show here today. He's running a nice third. He was in fourth, jumped up to third. He feels good at the outdoors. Yeah, it's the kind of track. It's all natural terrain, and he really likes this stuff. So hopefully we'll stay there. Earlier in the year, he wasn't really, it wasn't that he was riding so good, but he's really turned it on at the end of the year. What do you think's going on there? Well, he was hurt. Last year he got hurt a couple times, and then he got better, and then this year he got hurt again, and broke his collarbone in Houston, and then crashed again in San Jose, kind of got banged up, and he's getting back strong again, finally. Thank you, Jerry. Running a strong third place right now is James Dobb, but Doug Henry coming off the Dunlop doubles has crashed, but he gets back up, refires the bike. We have to wait and see if Ryan Hughes has gotten around him to take over the lead, but Doug Henry, a crash. Apparently, he is uninjured. The bike is okay. He refires it and gets back underway. And there is Ryan Hughes. So Ryan Hughes has gone to the lead with that big crash. Doug Henry only lost one position. That was a big crash and a very high-flying place to do it. We are going to have a chance to go back and take a look at it. Let's see if we can find out what happened there to our leader, Doug Henry. Oh, John, right over the handlebars leading into the Dunlop doubles. And But look, Jan, he gets right back up. You talked about this early in the year. You relax, you roll, you let the roll take up the force, and Doug Henry hops right back up, loses just one position, but very important, Ryan Hughes now, if they would finish this way in the first moto, would gain three points on Doug Henry, would trail by only 24 points with only three motos left in this season. In this moto, Hughes is pulled away just a little bit over Doug Henry as a result of that crash. Let's go down to Doug's pits with Jerry Bernardo. Doug ripped a nice hole shot. He was out front. It looks like he went out back, went up, went down on that downhill double. Did you get a report? Uh, no, I, I just saw it myself. I just came up short, and it looks like uh, maybe he just rode it down the hill and and fell over. I didn't seem like he crashed real hard. He's been doing all the triples, and Rhino has it. I think he's going to make up some time. Wouldn't you agree? Well, I'm trying to keep him focused that way. Uh, Doug and I have a strategy going into this race that we're going to race today no matter what happens. We're going to, he's going to put 100% into this race like he's always done all season long. And so uh, we'll see what happens if I can keep him going and uh, maybe catch you. Thanks. What Pete Steinbrecher is talking about there, John, of course, we need to remind our viewers is that Doug Henry is leading this championship by a large margin. And instead of laying back, they have decided they're going after it, and he's going to the front. He's riding aggressive for a championship points leader. I can't believe he's doing that. Let's look back at the fifth place, Tommy Clowers in Santee, California. Only his third event on the outdoor circuit this year, and Jan, he's got to be very happy with the way he's performing. Well, he's a full privateer on that Honda. His best finish so far has been a 17th in the second moto at Washougal. We look back here at Chad Lowe. Now, Chad Lowe, of course, had a couple of fourth place finishes on the GP support race. And of course, he's well known, unfortunately, on the outdoor circuit <laughs> for taking a lot of crashes off the start. But today, he's gonna go, oh, look at Robbie Raynard back there, number 33. Man, he's moving up through the field. Robbie Raynard didn't get off to the best of starts, but he has worked his way through the field. Robbie, we've seen him when he can keep the two wheels on the dirt 
He's one of the fastest riders out there. Right now, he has caught this. That's fifth place, Clower, sixth place, Low, And Robbie Rayner right now in seventh place. He's looking up to finish in the top five. Of course, Rayner would love to end this season strongly. He goes to the inside. He looks like he's got Chad Lowe set up. They come over some of the whoops. And Robbie Rayner on the inside run. He will take that position, the sixth spot. Now, he sets his sights on Clowers. They come up the hill. Rayner to the outside, sweeps around, and just simply overpowers Clowers. Flowers, and look how much distance he put between himself and Clowers in just that short amount of time, Jan. We know that Robbie Raynard is fast. Wow, was he on the gas there. He has a sore wrist. He has said he's not riding as well as he would like here. But, man, I don't know how much better you can ride than that, John. I tell you what, as young as he is, 17 years old, he's had so many injuries this year that he's got to hope that this winter he can just get healed up and go out gangbusters next year and contend for the championship. Speaking of contending for the championship, Ryan Hughes looking to close Doug Henry's points lead by three points. And there's a message uh, getting put on the board. I believe that's, yeah, that's Chad Watts, Rhino's mechanic, fast corners. What he means by that, John, is that we heard from our own Jerry Bernardo that Doug Henry was tripling on some of the jumps where Ryan Hughes was only doubling. So Chad Watts says, hey, keep your momentum up in the fast corners because right now you're getting smoked on the jumps. Well, right now, Doug Henry has just closed that gap earlier. He was nowhere to be seen after he took that tumble. He has closed the gap to the outside. Doug Henry goes, trying to sweep around. They'll come over the jumps in front of the crowd, listen to him cheer up the hill. But Ryan Hughes gets a little bit better of a bite. It looked like Doug Henry might have had a little problem there as they landed on that jump. That allows Rhino to pull away by just a few bike lengths. But Doug Henry once again closes it down, and he is right in his tracks, going to the inside here on this series of jumps and look at him out jump rhino and uh, we talked about the fast corners and how doug henry was doing the uh, jumping a little bit better than rhino we saw it right there but you could also see Jan where rhino managed to make up some ground in that turn looks like doug henry actually jumped and tried to jump right into position when we saw that feature on the split fire hot wheels team you can see the way these guys can really style over the jumps if they want to this was earlier oh look his his arms kind of gave way and he actually landed right right on top of one of those vinyl strips. Well, that was a close moment there for our points leader. Oh, man, if he could have taken a tumble there, then Ryan Hughes is right back in the battle for the championship. We're in a battle for the first position here in moto number one at Binghamton. Ryan Hughes is leading Doug Henry, but the fans are cheering on this young man here. I guess uh, we're up in the Northeast, maybe some hometown fans that he brought along with him. But Ryan Hughes is leading it. We are at the midway point. Center, Binghamton, New York. Jerry Bernardo down in the pits. Jan Bikas and John Kernan up here in the booth. We are watching Ryan Hughes, who was the overall winner last weekend on the other coast at Washuga, Washington. He is leading Doug Henry, but by just the smallest of margins. Let's check into Rhino's pit with Jerry. Chad, what do you think? You get that look of determination. It looks like you're out there riding around with Rhino. Yeah, uh, aggressive. I mean, Henry's being a madman today. He's charging everywhere. He's riding really good. So uh, Rhino's just got to stay loose and not worry about Henry. And I uh, wish for the best. All I can say is you know the fans are going to be going off here from Tioga because we got a good race up front there with those two. Yeah, well, they got a, they're going good. They got a, probably about a six second lead over Dobbs. Mm -hmm. So uh, they got to stay aggressive, and I hope we win this thing. Thanks. Did you notice the hat that Jerry had on down there, Pro Circuit? I guess, well, we're looking at his instructor right now, his riding instructor, Ryan Hughes, is leading Doug Henry. I wonder if uh, Jerry's now pulling for him now that he's a member of that team. Well, I would think so. As a former driving instructor, I know it's great when your students root for you, and I have a feeling that Jerry Bernardo's got a favorite down there in the Pro Circuit team. But right now, just like Chad Watt said, Doug Henry is going crazy. Doug Henry going to the outside. He draws alongside, a little more power coming off the jump. They'll go up the hill, and this is where Doug Henry makes his move. A little bit of a bump there. You recall earlier, just a couple of laps ago, Doug Henry actually got off the track, landed on the pennants, and lost a little bit of time, but he didn't fall off the bike. He's worked his way back around. Ryan Hughes and Doug Henry, look at him, go out in front. Well, let's look at it on replay. This is where he had trouble last time. 
The key is who gets the rear wheel down first. That's what happened, John. You got to get the rear wheel on the ground so you can get the power back on. That was a perfect job by Doug Henry. We started talking about that a little bit earlier. We said about the styling and the way they did in the feature when the Pro Circuit team was with our own Jerry Bernardo. But when they're racing, they got to get the back wheel on the ground because you can't get in front of somebody unless you're putting the power to the ground. But look at Ryan Hughes. He's not giving up. No, he's not. In fact, he didn't give up much whenever they went into that turn and Doug Henry had the inside line. Rhino wanted it. A little bit of give and take because they could have very easily crashed each other at that portion of the track. But these guys racing for a championship. Now we look back as a uh, battle for the fourth position. Robbie Raynard has chased down music and Yezik, I should say, trying to get that name pronounced correctly, is trying to hold on and he's done a masterful job today. But Raynard going around to the outside. Yezik holds him off as they come across the jump. Man, Yezik, a great ride today, but look at Robbie up the hill. He's got that factory machine and uh, just maybe a little more horsepower. Robbie Raynard put the same kind of pass there on Yezik that we saw Doug Henry put on Ryan Hughes. Isn't it interesting that we saw Honda do it to Kawasaki and now we saw Kawasaki do it to a Honda. So it shows it's the rider that's making the difference here, not necessarily the machine. But remember, Yezik is on a Honda of Troy machine, not the factory Red Rider. On replay, it's almost an exact replay. Yeah, you can see again, that rear wheel got on the ground first, back on the power. That's what makes the difference. Well, you could see as Robbie came off the jump, he actually clicked it to the right side, the uh, front wheel, to get himself lined up on that inside perfectly and he moves into that position back up front doug henry is hey wait a second doug henry is now in second place ryan hughes has moved out into the lead apparently uh no one around here saw what happened uh, jerry bernardo down in the pits hey we're kind of totally lost up here in the booth what happened out there we're here we're here with team manager dave arnold dave i turn my head for one second change into the gods what happened to doug uh, they have to get a lot of drive off that corner before the uphill, and the rut's getting fairly deep. I think he just tucked his front end in the rut, and got a little sideways in it, tipped over, didn't lose the bike at all, but then you know, that enabled Ryan to get back by. The, the buzz here in the pits is it's obvious that Doug Henry's going for it. Did you see that rock just almost hit us? He just did a killer going for the pass here. Total almost endo. The kid's going off. Yeah, Doug's fully committed to try to just go out and win and not try not to think about the points in the series. He just wants to put a win under and get the pressure of the, uh, the series off the shoulders. Speaking of pressure, Jan, you won an Indy Lights championship. Was it close like this is? Or well, a big lead? unfortunately, it? it came down to the very last race, so I can tell you why Doug Henry and his mechanic have decided to try and just go for it here to take the pressure off. If you go into the last race and you only have a few point lead, I mean, the pressure is almost unbearable. But if he can just go for it like Doug Henry is doing now, it will actually take the pressure off of him because you have a huge lead going into the final couple races. Well, Ryan Hughes certainly doesn't like to see that type of strategy. He came in here trailing Henry by 27 points. Look back in the fifth position, Davey Yezik. He got off to a pretty good start. He was riding along in fourth until Robbie Raynard got around him. Robbie, once he got around, Robbie took off like a shot and is pulled away. So Yezik right now trying to finish with the top five. You know, Yezik has got to be absolutely thrilled. This is his best finish. If he can keep it in this spot of the season, and as we look up here towards Ryan Hughes, he wishes that he had his best finish of the season. He's going to have to have it if he is going to close the gap here on Henry. Well, as we get down to the final few laps here in moto number one if they continue to run this way Jan, he actually would whittle three points off of doug henry's lead but look at doug henry he has come back and come back and once again he has pulled right up on ryan hughes henry going to the outside they'll go up the hill he sweeps back in is he going to try him on the inside no rhino shuts the door but henry is right there look at those fans you see them they walk almost right out on the racetrack take their caps off look at them swinging the towels these fans are into this race this is a great one john well once again look at doug henry now there's an opening rhino's rear wheel washes out henry takes over the top spot coming over the jumps and uh once again you know Jan, that's in that same spot where he took the lead earlier going up the hill he just did it earlier this time and instead of going outside he went inside but i guess what rhino did kind of dictated which line he had to take through that turn well it all comes down to how much drive can you get off a corner we can see right there ryan hughes is going through a rut just has a slight bobble but look how much earlier doug henry got on the power that's what makes the difference and here 
he's got clear sailing into the lead. Well, Doug Henry has taken the lead, and we should mention that uh, near the midway point of the season, he started taking an IV prior to the races because he's had that stomach problem. Well, down to the pits, Jan Vikas and John Kernan up top. Doug Henry, defending national champion, the points leader, has worked his way back around Ryan Hughes, and Jan, if he can just maintain this position, he's going to just about wrap up the points title. He has been absolutely on fire today, John. If he goes on to win like it looks like he is, this will be his sixth moto win of this year. When he won the championship last year, he won seven motos. Obviously, this is really looking good for his championship hopes. Look at the fans. They love this. Well, also, Doug Henry with three overall victories last year. He's got two overall victories uh, this year so far. Doug Henry waving to the crowd. Checkered flag is out. Doug Henry wins the moto, his sixth moto victory of the year. Jerry Bernardo is walking over. We'll have a word with the victory in a second. Ryan Hughes, a valiant effort, but comes home in second place. Followed by Dobb. Rainer Damon Huffman moves up into the top five. And remember Jeff Emig who fell in the early stages of Moto 1. Look at that. Worked his way up to a sixth place finish. Well, Jerry is down there with Doug. All right, Doug, that was a great race. You went out like a ball of flame. You were doing the triple. Rhino wasn't. You were doing the double. Rhino was bobbling. Not every other lap. Then you guys started to switch back and forth. What was going on? The ruts were grabbing at your bike or what? I don't know. I, just, uh, I was just trying to go as fast as I could out there. You know, I really wanted to went out here and show him, you know, who can go the fastest at Binghamton? And uh, you know, I was trying to ride, you know, fast. I could have been riding over my head, but I, you know, I went out there and won. And uh, I'm glad. I'm psyched. All these fans out here just kept pushing me all the way. It's great. I was gonna say, what when he got you back though? You made a couple of little mistakes and he went by you. Did you know you had the speed to reel him back in? Yeah, I think so. You know, every time I got by him, you know, I pulled a little on him, then I'd fall and then get back up and. Uh, you know, it was, just, it was just good race, and I thought, you know, the, the, the crowd was behind me 100%, and uh, I really want to thank them for this race. I like that original smile you got going on. When you win, you're smiling, and I know what it's all about, because you're having a good time. Riding like a madman. Oh, yeah, madman it is. <laughs> Well, Ryan Hughes rode like a madman, but he still lost three points to Doug Henry in the standings. However, with Lammy's 11th place finish, Rhino moves into the second spot. All right, Rhino, we had a killer race between you and Doug Henry. Talk to me. Yeah, he got a, he got a whole shot out of second. You know, I tried following some of his lines. He got away a little bit, then he fell. I got by him, just riding my own race. You know, I felt pretty smooth out there. I didn't want it to get away from me, so, you know, and he passed me again, crashed again, so he was kind of riding maybe a little bit over his head, but... You know, he won, so, you know, I can't take anything away from him. I just wanted to ride smooth and collect as many points I can, and, you know, that's the best I could do. Well, you had a good race. Chad said that he saw you riding a little stiff. Did you feel stiff? Yeah, I felt really stiff, so I just got to relax a little bit in between motos and hopefully come out plugging away. All right, we'll let you go. Thanks. Well, it was a good first moto for the pro circuit team. James Dobb, Rhino's teammate, finished a very strong third. Jerry has caught up with him. We talked to Ali. I said, hey, Ali, Dobby's looking good out there. He rides better, I think, a little bit better on the outdoors than uh, your showings at Supercross. Yeah, I'm definitely getting a lot better uh, in Supercross, but obviously I've got a lot more experience outdoors, so that's my main goal I look for, especially that's all that's left this year, so I'm just trying to get better and better every week. Okay, was any of the uh, motivation for today's third-place finish from me training, riding with you on Wednesday? Oh, yeah, it was all from you, Jerry. I couldn't have done it without you. Hey, if you ever need lessons, this is the man. This on how to crash, on. how to get roosted. <laughs> also, maybe how to get your hair done. Remember, Jerry the Beautician Bernardo. Sounds like he should be in pro wrestling. <laughs> we will be back in just a couple of minutes with the start of moto number two. Back at Binghamton, and what looks like it could be a major development. Doug Henry, the points leader who won the first moto. They're working on his bike in the clutch area, Jan. Well, at first I thought this could be a major problem here for Doug Henry because we're only minutes away from the start of the second moto, but it may just be a clutch adjustment. Remember, they don't ride any practice laps before the second moto. He must have felt it riding to the grid. Well, there's a good look at Steve Lamson. Remember, he had some problems, got kind of tangled up after a slow start in moto number one, worked his way back to an 11th place finish. He is now dropped in points to third position. Ryan Hughes has moved up in the second. Rhino heading into this second moto at Binghamton, trailing Doug Henry by 30 points. And Jeff Emig, remember he fell. He was also dead last at the start of the first moto, worked his way up to a sixth place finish. 
Emig back after taking a week off at Wushugal. Getting set for the uh, start of moto number two. There's the 32nd sign. It goes down, and the gate will drop momentarily. We'll have to wait and see who gets the hole shot. The gate will drop towards them. They're away. We're going to watch them right into the first corner. They don't have quite as long of a run. Let's see who gets it. It's number 84. Tony Graves looks like he got a great start on a Honda. Yeah, but it doesn't last long. Damon Huffman, Doug Henry get around, and Damon Huffman on the Suzuki scoots out in front of Henry, and he takes over the lead. And look at Damon coming up the hill. Gets a great bite off the jumps, gets the power back down, and he scoots away a little bit from Doug Henry, who slips sideways coming out of that turn. Well, look at there, 92. Mike Brown on another Honda. He has got another good start. A couple of guys we haven't seen got great gates. Speaking of great gates and great jumps, wow, look at Doug Henry jump right into the lead. Doug Henry takes over the top spot. He won moto number one. In fact, he fell once, did a hand, a head over the handlebars type of uh, thing, almost a face plant, got back up, retook the lead. Then he had a problem in a rut, lost the lead, but came back. Doug Henry definitely the fastest out there on the track today. Now he's around Damon Huffman, and look, Robbie Raynard has moved into the third spot. The green Kawasaki of Robbie Raynard, number 33, he picked up about three or four spots, and then I think just at the end there, we saw a couple of the pro circuit guys so they did not get off the gate. Now we see on replay, look at that. He jumps right into position, takes it away from Damon Huffman. Damon Huffman says, I'm one of the fastest guys out here. I just haven't had good starts this year. Now he got the kind of start he wanted. Let's see how he handles the rest of this moto. But he's got Robbie Raynard hot on his tail. You mentioned Robbie Raynard, some injuries. Uh, wrist has been bothering him, but he was very fast in that first moto. He got off to kind of a mediocre start, but Robbie worked his way into the top five and wound up with a fourth place finish. Right now he sets in third, and he has his sights set on Damon Huffman. But Damon gets away just a little bit right there in that second spot, and Damon, you would expect to have a good run here at this track. You know, both these two riders are very tall, and Damon Huffman says that his height gives him problems. He has long legs, and on a track, when it gets rutted, he says that gives him problems. Of course, now in the second moto, there's always more ruts than in the first. Well, Damon Huffman doing a good job hanging on to that second position right there. We should mention that Steve Lamson, you could get just a small glimpse of him right there. Lammy riding along in fourth place. There's the signboard from, from uh, Tony Berluti, who's the chief mechanic for Damon Huffman, saying lots of time, lots of time. Remember, this is 30 minutes plus two laps here in moto number two. But Doug Henry, the defending champ, the points leader, and the winner of moto number one is leading it. Back at Binghamton, a battle for the lead shaping up. In fact, it is getting red hot. Damon Huffman chasing down Doug Henry, separated by only a bike length. Damon Huffman on the Suzuki, one of the companies that makes this race possible, is trying to go after the Honda Red Rider. Damon Huffman, as we mentioned earlier, he has said in the press, if I can get a good start, I can beat anybody. Let's see if he can beat the fastest man at the moment, Doug Henry. Well, you mentioned that Suzuki helping make this race possible. Also, Dunlop Tires, one of the big sponsors here at this track. Damon Huffman taking a little bit different line. They come up the jumps. He pulls even, momentarily even, I should say. And now it's Henry who goes to the outside of that rut, but Henry gets through that unscathed, and he maintains the lead. Both of those guys, no way did they venture all the way to the outside, though, John. They know that does lead to nowhere. They look like they're side-by-side. Side. He's trying to move here, John. And now he comes on the inside. Damon Huffman. Henry goes to the high side, and Huffman, by virtue of that inside line, moves out in front. He said if he gets a good start, he feels he can beat anyone, but look at Doug Henry. He comes back down, gets on the brakes hard, loses his momentum, and Huffman, who was taking that outside sideline was able to get on the gas just a little bit sooner as he scoots around back into the lead maintaining that top position Doug Henry though is uh, holding on to the second spot Huffman made the move on an off camber turn look they're coming downhill the angle of the terrain is not working for them here they're looking for ruts there was the key Huffman got on the power earlier got up the hill with great momentum right now without any mistakes He's obviously going to, oh, he clears his visor, and he has clear sailing in front of him from here on out. Well, he took a tearaway off. It looked like Doug Henry in the first moto had the other with the roll of the clear tape that comes across your uh, face mask, and it looked like that's what he was using for this race. But Damon Huffman using the tearaways, and he is trying to tear away from Doug Henry as we will be back with the closing moments in photo number two in just a minute. 
Welcome back to Broom Tioga Sports Center, Binghamton, New York. Jerry Bernardo down in the pits. Jan Bikas and John Kernan up here in the booth. And we are in the closing stages, moto number two, Doug Henry. In second place, he has a slight lead on Robbie Raymond. You can see that photographer was taking a lot of flash pictures back there, and he is getting some great ones today as we see Doug Henry and Robbie Rayner. Robbie Rayner has been loose on the bike. We mentioned that he has a sore wrist, but he is riding great today, and his style is a little different. He just lets that bike work underneath him. And look there in fourth position, Steve Lampson had that 11th place finish. He dropped from second to third in the points. Right now in this moto, after moto one here, he is trailing Doug Henry by 41 points. He's 11 points behind Rhino Hughes for the second spot. But here is the battle on the track. Right now is Damon Huffman pulling away. He is your leader. Doug Henry, second place. Whoa, oh, Robbie Rayner. Oh, man. man. How did he hang on to that? Robbie Rayner came off of there, got on the power. It washed out. He just stayed on the throttle. Both, oh, look, he's going to lose a position. Lamson comes through. Lamson moving into the third spot. Robbie Rayner has to be catching his breath right now, or maybe he's probably still holding his breath. Jan, that was a scary moment for that 17-year-old rider as he just about lost it. I said that he lets the bike work underneath him. <laughs> I didn't mean quite to that level. Well, he's coming back after a Lamson. Look, he gets on the power just a little too hard whoa but then he stays on the power oh. both legs come off oh. and he still takes the jump and gets his feet back on the pedals but look what happened here Lampson takes advantage comes to the inside and picks up the position <laughs> that's one of those uh, very exciting things that happens and you're gonna have to change the leathers uh, riding uh, pants after that I suppose but look at Steve Lampson he's trying to pick up a couple of points on Doug Henry but Lammy's championship hopes are soon washing out we only have three motos left that includes this one and we're in the final 10 minutes of this moto here but look at Lammy he is really putting on the heat on his teammate these two guys love riding together they know each other's riding style of course anytime you have teammates battling they want so badly to beat each other this will probably be the battle on the circuit we're on the final lap now Damon Huffman's checked out we'll have to see what happens here for second I said the final 10 minutes I think my watch has stopped John I'm gonna have to go get a new one and look there you see Steve Lampson and once he's in the air, gets time to clear his vision so he can take a look at Doug Henry, who is in second place right now. Lammy wants to take away that position. We should mention, of course, we're not watching Damon Huffman. He is in the lead. This is a big breakthrough victory for him. He has been struggling. If he does pull it off, it'll be his third moto victory of this season. Well, you see the two Red Riders coming up the hill. Damon Huffman was nowhere to be seen. He's already more or less checked out. He is going to cruise to the victory in this moto unless something would happen. But it looks like Doug Henry with a second-place finish. And look, Steve Lampson going to the outside. It looks like he might have had a slight problem there. He loses some ground to Doug Henry. As I was starting to say, Jan, Doug Henry, he can hang on to the second spot, or I believe even if he finishes third, he will get the overall victory. It would be his third overall of the year. Well, with that many overalls and that many moto wins, we mentioned he's had six moto wins, it's going to be tough to touch this guy. But today it belongs, or at least this afternoon, in the second moto belongs to Damon Huffman. And I would have to say that some of the moves that Lamson made there, I think he's too far back to challenge Henry. Well, we are about a half a lap to go to the finish of moto number two. And Doug Henry trying to take the pressure off himself, as Pete Steinbrecher said, with some strong finishes today. Take the pressure off as far as the points battle goes, and he is doing just that. A magnificent ride in the first moto. He came away the winner after crashing once and falling another time. Right now, he's in second place, and I believe we saw Damon Huffman going up over a jump there. Uh, saw a Suzuki flash by, and that would tell you that he has got just a tremendous advantage over this battle for second. Well, this is closing down, but of course the bikes always look like they close down when they go into very slow corners. We're only a couple of turns away from the checkered flag, but Lamson is closing now. Lamson closes Henry's advantage for second to one bike length. Meanwhile, Damon Huffman is cruising as he heads toward the finish line. Lammy going to the outside. There you see Damon Huffman. He will win moto number two as he just has a couple of more turns to negotiate. Huffman with that left hand up, waving to the fans over the little jump. And there's the checkered flag. It is out. And Doug Henry holds off Steve Lamson's charge. He will finish second. Robbie Raynard with a strong fourth place advantage. And as you take a look at the rest of the top ten, let's check in with Jerry Bernardo. 
Damon, that was awesome. That was some wild racing out there. Once you got by Henry, yeah. man, you totally ruled the airwaves. Yeah, you know, Henry at first, he set a pretty fast pace, and uh, I hung right with him, and he actually pulled away a little bit, then, you know, about the halfway point, I caught right back up to him, then Bernard jumped in there for a while, then I think he faded back a little, but, uh, yeah, my Suzuki worked really great. This track's super rough, and uh, my Dunlop tires and Shoah suspension helped out a lot. And, yeah, there uh, was a little bit of political disappointment last time at Washougal. Were you thinking of any of that, or were you just going out for today's win at Broom Tayoga? Yeah, you know, it's, to have none of that, you just go out and win the moto, and that's all you could do, you know. And last week, the points worked where I thought I had the overall, but turns out I didn't. You know, it's just uh, an error of my mechanics and my part. But um, it just proves if you win the moto, you know, you can't do no more. If you win the moto, you the man. Yeah. <laughs> but Doug Henry, Jerry, would have to be considered the overall man today by virtue of a one-two finish. He takes the overall victory and, of course, padding his points lead. Steve Lamson is sixth overall. He drops further back. Geez, you're not smiling quite as much as the last time, even though I'm assuming you take the overall with a one-two. Yeah, I took the overall. I'm pretty sure I did, and uh, you know, I'm really happy about that. You know, going into this weekend, I wanted to win. You know, and I, I won the first one, became second, the second one, so not so bad. <laughs> yeah, how do you feel now? Do you look like you might be a little bit tired after that moto? That was quite a dice show. Yeah, I got a little tired out there. Uh, you know, the track changed a lot between the first moto and the second moto, and uh, my lines were pretty were a little uh, worse, I think, in the second moto, you know, so, uh, you know, I tried to just try to find the lines the best I could and, uh, you know, tried to ride a smooth, strong race. Okay, after Huffman went by you, did you, I mean, did that slow you up? You kind of faded back, or did you know if you just hung in second, you'd still take the overall? Because he ran away after he got by you. Yeah, uh, you know, he got by me, and I tried to stay with him as long as I could. I stayed with him for about a lap, and, you know, he just kept pulling from there. Um, you know, I just, I was just trying to ride my own race, you know, if he went out there and, and won, you know, uh, you know, as long as I was doing the best I could. Still got a comfortable points lead, but it looks like it's going to come right down to that last round in Delmont. Yeah, uh, that last round in Delmont is going to be the decider. <laughs> Keep the fans on their toes. Good All job, right, Doug. Thanks. Thanks a lot. <laughs> All right, thank you, Jerry Bernardo. Nice job, as always. Doug Henry leading Ryan Hughes by 36 points. Steve Lamson, 43 out. Lammy Rhino, the only ones who can contend for the championship. Damon Huffman is 53 points behind. He's in fourth. He is out of it. The maximum number of points you can get, Jan, 50. And look at that hand-card trophy there that Doug Henry has. Well, he has some strength left, John. You know, he said that he was tired. He was sitting down. He did not have that IV like you talked about that Dr. Tom Malone had given him. You know, speaking of that, Dr. Malone has become very popular. A lot of the other riders are hoping to get those IV injections, but uh, to no avail. Well, Doug Henry does has had a serious medical condition, and you can justify him getting that because you don't want him to get sick and possibly injure himself or make matters worse. But he has to be out there riding. These guys, very tough. Who says they're not athletes? These guys are the top athletes in the world. I think they're the top athletes in any sport. You can tell just by their ages. A few more years, these guys aren't going to be able to ride the kind of speeds they can now. They have a lot of endurance, and Dr. Tom Malone did do a great job in providing some strength for Henry Forrest earlier in the season. Well.